Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. You are here because are following up the first chapter of the Asai timelines. So, let me be back where I have left. Around 1949, Japan cameras industry under the motto of Reach for the Moon, the boom of 35mm cameras occurred and companies like Nikon and Canon got an overwhelming success in the market selling 35mm cameras which were merely an imitation of Rolleiflex twin lens reflex and Laker rangefinder cameras. Under this boom, Masumoto decided that was the right time to produce his company's own camera, not producing cameras like others, being innovative and developing a new 35mm single lens reflex camera with low competition and good lens quality. Masumoto believed the 35mm camera will be the type of camera of the future of photography. The research on the Asahi camera started. Time was consumed and after several false starts, no camera was ready for production. Masumoto concluded that he needed new, skillful and imaginative people to complete the project. Masumoto went to seek Ryohei Suzuki, an experienced lens designer, who had met him before when Asahi was supplying lenses to Konshiruku to fulfill his dreams and an offer that Suzuki couldn't resist. Although Suzuki was an experienced lens designer, his knowledge about designing cameras was very limited. To solve this major problem, he introduced his former colleague, Nobuyuki Yoshida. Nobuyuki Yoshida, a former worker at Konishiruku, a camera mechanics designer who has started his own business as a camera repairman. He agreed to develop the new design but refused to enter the company at this stage because he had no experience with manufacturing or designing single lens reflex bodies because Konishiruku was developing the Perlete, a folding camera. So Masumoto decided that Yoshida would design the body and Suzuki would design the lenses, but how to start? Some say their reference was from the old Kochman Reflex Corel 6x6 SLR that Masumoto had from before the war. Others say from the Duflex. The trio knew about the existence of the Kinin Zakta and Contax S. They could not use them for reference purposes because these cameras were, at the time, never officially imported into Japan. Only a few keen exactors have been used by Japanese photography enthusiasts, but it was not known if any of these cameras survived the war. Due to these limitations, the trio had to start virtually from scratch. No parts were available. Each single piece was produced by hand and in Yoshida's own home laboratory. In late 1951, the prototype was ready. After a camera test made by Matsumoto, he was delighted with the results, deciding to mass production the camera. However, Yoshida had neither enough equipment nor space for mass production cameras. The trio gathered and it was agreed that Yoshida officially entered the company and that the camera would be manufactured at the Oyama factory. Asahi completed three fully working cameras and was taken to the stores to sell. Disappointment happened because no one seemed to be interested. The wholesales, in their opinion, it was safer and more profitable to work with products for which a steady demand has already formed. It was necessary to find partners to promote the new camera on the market. Otherwise, Asahi would have to say goodbye to the idea of mass production. Masumoto's perseverance attitude got the payoff. Optical division of Atari, now Seiko, was very interested in the camera and decided to sell and distribute the camera for Asahi. Mass production of the camera started in February 1952. The camera was innovative, a crossover between a waist-level camera in rangefinder, named Asahi Flex 1, equipped with a semi-quick return mirror mechanism associated with the shutter release, 
one flash synchronizer terminal and non-standard shutter speeds with Takumar lenses. Sales stood out from other makers, but was it too good to manage? The semi-quick return mirror caused it. Image blackout. When the shutter release button was pressed, the mirror flipped up and the shutter was triggered. The mirror only returned when the shutter button was released. This mechanism created problems at longer shutter speeds, where it was necessary to hold the trigger until it was closed that the falling mirror did not obscure the photosensitive material. The photographer never knows if he took a photo at the right moment. Cameras were returned to the factory due to faulty flash synchronization. The fact is that Atari flash fired with a delay. When designing, camera synchronization was tested in tandem with another flash. The camera evolution was followed by improvement in shutter speeds, shutter delay and flash sync terminals until 1954, when Asahi Flex 2B was launched with a quick return mirror mechanism. But it wasn't that perfect too. The spring for the swing mirror was so that strong, photographers could feel a blow, vibrating the camera with blurred photos results. In the same year, Asahi Optical Company official name is changed to Asahi Kogaku as Asahi Pentas Corporation is established. The importance of the quick return mirror in the Asahi Flex 2 was recognized widely. Japanese government rejected the Asahi patent application, resulting in other Japanese companies adopting it quickly and making it an industry standard. But German manufacturers were unwilling or unable to improve their products, a situation which also add up to the collapse of the German optical industry in the 60s and 70s. Behind the Asahi Flex 2 8 relaunch, Asahi was developing his first Asahi Flex Penta Prism, making use of five-sided roof prism, which ensured the formation of a correct and not inverted image in the viewfinder, which consists an evolution of the Asahi Flex 2A. However, the Penta Prism was handmade and polished by themselves, increasing significantly the final cost of production. The prototype was released in December 1954 and representatives of trading companies were ready to supply a contract right at the exhibition. To minimize the cost of the pentaprism, Asahi paid nearly 7 million Japanese yen to purchase a French automatic grinder designed for the mass production of pentaprism. The total investment exceeded the company's fixed capital by four times. As a result, the preparation of the production base for the mass production of cameras was complete. In 1957, Asahi Pentax 35 is launched with a Pentax prism and a fast outer mirror. Pentax brand already existed at that time. It belonged to the German company Zeiss Icon, and Asahi Optical had to buy this trademark. It is the merger of the words Penta Prism and Reflex. In 1960, Nobuyuki Yoshida received the second Science and Technology Agency Director's Award for his invention and improvement of the quick return mirror. Rewinding, my observation was prompted. Hypotheses are 1919, Asahi from the beginning had a good reputation for lens polishing. The lens manufactured in 1933 for cine projectors and lenses supplied in 1924 to Konishiruku were copies of German lens design. Saburo Masumoto was already working in the factory as a lens polisher. Asahi factory during the late 40s and early 50s, the Asahi employees were working very hard to produce 25,000 lenses per month for the micro series of Samba Shokai. At the peak time, the lens elements for the micro camera were polished and coated in the Asahi factory in daytime, and then brought to Samuru Masumoto's house at night to have them glued together with optical balsam. Takumar lenses were designed and developed by Ryohei Suzuki. It was named Takumar in appreciation of Kajiwara Takuma achievement. 
Nobuyuki Yoshida revolutionized the SLR. Saburu Masumoto, a great man. And the conclusions are yours.